well, I couldn't possibly solve this mystery. Can you? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most shocking TV cliffhangers. Holy mother forking shirt balls. What? Wow. Okay, <laughs> okay. For this list, we'll be looking at the best moments that left us clutching our chests and gasping in shock. Massive spoilers ahead, and don't make us wait until next week. Let us know your favorite cliffhangers in the comments below. Number 10. Car Accident. Supernatural. Ending on a moment like this one takes a lot of guts, especially if you don't know whether your show is going to get picked up for season 2. Listen, tough guy, we're not ready, okay? We don't know how many of them are out there. Now, we're no good to anybody dead. It might seem wild to think about now, since Supernatural ran for so long, but fans did not know if we would see more of the Winchester brothers following season one, and season one's finale didn't take any prisoners. Am I just getting this over with, huh? Because I really can't stand the monologuing. The final episode ends with Sam, Dean, and John as the victims of a gnarly and bloody car accident. Our favorite boys are all knocked out cold, and the episode ends before we know if they'll ever wake up again. We should start over, all right? I mean, we already found the demon. Of course, they do, but it was heart-wrenching in the moment. Number 9. What Just Happened? Alias. That's what you get for waking up in Hong Kong. At the end of season two of Alias, poor Sydney goes through quite the gamut of emotions. Stop being as stubborn as I am. I knew from the beginning I'd turn myself in that I would betray the CIA, but not you. I had to be careful. I needed you to trust me. She finds out her best friend is dead and has been replaced with a double, and then has to kill said double. But that's far from the weirdest thing that happens to Sid during this episode. At the very end, she wakes up and finds herself in Hong Kong. Everyone around her is walking on eggshells until they finally drop the bomb. Sydney has been missing for two years. You've been missing for almost two years. Think about how we felt having to wait for the show to come back after that reveal. Honestly, it's just rude. Number 8. Rita's Death, Dexter Far be it from us to think that Dexter would ever give up his serial killing ways, but in the season 4 finale of Dexter, he endeavored to do just that. I want you to disappear from my life. Like a ghost. A really annoying ghost. And you'll disappear from my life? I couldn't care less about your life. With Arthur, better known as the Trinity Killer, finally off the table, Dexter decides that maybe he loves his family more than he loves the ability to kill, and decides to give it up. It's ruining my life. It is your life. I don't want it to be. Unfortunately, that promise only lasts for so long. Upon returning home after getting rid of Arthur's body, Dexter finds he didn't kill the serial killer fast enough. Arthur had already killed Dexter's wife Rita, leaving her in the tub for him to find. I'm what's wrong. This is fate. We're left with that image, wondering what Dexter will do until next season. Number 7. Buffy's Death – Buffy the Vampire Slayer Technically speaking, Buffy Summers has already died a couple of times by the time Season 5's The Gift rolled around. But the Season 5 finale's version of her death felt a lot more shocking and final to fans. No, Donnie, I have to. No! In a desperate effort to stop the demonic world domination event, Buffy's sister Dawn considers jumping into a portal. But if we knew Buffy, then we know she can't let that happen. Buffy jumps into the portal herself saving the world and dying in the process. The episode ends with a shot of Buffy's headstone, signaling to the audience that she might be dead for good this time.
Obviously, she's later resurrected, but we had to wait a long time to learn that bit of information. Number 6. Eeny Meeny Miny Mo, The Walking Dead This episode of The Walking Dead puts you right in the center of the cliffhanger. At the end of Season 6, a group called The Saviors captures Rick and his friends. Let's get her down and get you all on your knees. Lots to cover. Their menacing leader, Negan, takes control of the group and declares that one of them must die for the group's sins. He engages in a terrifying game of Eeny Meeny Miny Mo and chooses a victim. Eeny Meeny Miny Mo. But instead of showing us who he chooses, the camera switches to the captive's point of view. We're put in their frame of reference as Negan savagely beats them to death. You can breathe. You can blink. You can cry. Hell, you're all gonna be doing that. After that horrifying moment, fans were left to wait until next season to find out who it was that died. An agonizing wait, to be sure. Number 5. I, Ross, Take Thee, Rachel. Friends, the vows heard around the world. Deep down, we always knew that Ross should not get married to Emily. So when Rachel showed up at the wedding in London, we were sure that she would do something to mess it up. What happened? Why are you here? Well, I just came to... <laughs> I just needed to tell you. Congratulations. Shockingly, it wasn't Rachel who screwed up Ross's big day, but Ross himself. During the vows, Ross accidentally called Emily by Rachel's name. Big yikes. I, Ross. I, Ross. Take thee, Emily. Take thee, Rachel. <laughs> Emily. As Emily stands there shocked, the officiant asks the couple if he should go on, and then the credits roll. Shall I go on? Fans had to wait until next season to figure out whether Emily would be a runaway bride or a wife scorned. Number 4. The Red Wedding – Game of Thrones Game of Thrones is pretty much known for its cliffhangers. You don't end an episode like Hardhome with the Night King raising the dead and not expect to leave a few people agog. But nothing hit us quite like the shock of the Red Wedding. The other thing this show loved to do was leave us with massive cliffhangers, not during the finale, but during episode 9. I feel I've been remiss in my duties. I've given you meats and wine and music, but I haven't shown you the hospitality you deserve. This season 3 episode was no different. Watching Rob Stark and his bannermen massacred by the phrase, those they considered their allies, was agonizing. You don't want it enough! Let it end! Please! The worst part? It's a toss-up between the brutal death of Talisa and Catelyn watching this unfold before meeting the same fate. Number 3. Leaves of Grass – Breaking Bad we all wondered when someone would finally figure out what Walter White was up to and go after him. But the way DEA agent Hank Schrader learns about his brother-in-law Walter's drug dealing activities is a doozy. While hanging out at Walter's house, Hank finds a copy of Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass in Walter's bathroom. The book has a note from Gail Betteker, Walter's old meth lab assistant. Hank connects the dots and realizes his brother-in-law, his friend, is Heisenberg. Walter White? <laughs> you got me. The mid-season finale leaves us at that moment, wondering what Hank will do and how he will confront Walter with this new information. Number 2. J.R.'s Assailant, Dallas 
Perhaps one of the most memorable cultural events of the past 50 or so years, the identity of J.R. Ewing's shooter on Dallas drove audiences bonkers. You better start talking. Fast. Vaughn, all I can say is I am sorry. Sorry will not do. At the end of the season 3 finale, J.R., one of the most iconic villains in television history, was shot. We never see the assailant as J.R. collapses to the floor, leaving us to wonder if he survived and who could have possibly done it. The television event took the world by storm. The catchphrase, Who Shot JR? went viral before viral was a thing, taking over the eight month span between seasons three and four. An estimated 83 million Americans tuned in to find out who did it. I have finally figured everything out, that's all. You have been trying to frame me. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. The cycle begins again. The good place. It was the bad place all along. I can't believe you figured it out. <laughs> oh, God! You, you ruined everything, you know that? McDreamy is married. Grey's Anatomy. Just when things are going well, the wife shows up. What are you doing here? Well, you'd know if you bothered to return any one of my phone calls. Hi, I'm Addison Shepard. Shepard? And you must be the woman who's been screwing my husband. John and Lucy, ER, a double stabbing. Starbuck is alive. Battlestar Galactica. She's back and she knows the way to Earth. It's gonna be okay. I've been to Earth. I know where it is. And I'm gonna take us there. Sam the Shapeshifter, True Blood. Sam finds himself in the doghouse. I'm not the killer, I swear. I'm a shapeshifter. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. We have to go back. Lost. Lost was full of mysteries during its six-year run, and there were plenty of cliffhangers during that time to keep us on the edge of our seats. We were gobsmacked at the image of a light turning on in that underground hatch. But for us, the season three two-part finale takes the cake. Throughout the episode, we're watching a depressed, alcoholic version of Jack off the island in sequences we assume are flashbacks. Don't you look at me like that. Don't you pity me. I'm trying to help you. You can't help me! But at the end of the episode, Jack meets up with Kate, revealing that what we're watching is taking place in the future, and the two have left the island. Jack screams, We have to go back! at Kate as the episode ends, leaving audiences everywhere shocked and more lost than ever. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.